today I'm going to be tying an emerger um, that I use explicitly for big brook trout and big salmon in the fall. And this is my most productive fly for those. If you don't believe me, go check out my Instagram, my latest post, or actually by the time I post this, I guess it'll be a few posts to go, but that big brook trout came on this exact fly. So um, first I'm starting with some floss. And I like to work down into the bend of the hook, not too far, but into the bend of the hook. Um, and I leave the tail long because we can trim it later, you know, at a later uh, time. This is a barbless emerger hook, size 14, I believe, or 16, one or the other, either, either size work. Um, next, we're gonna make the body, and this is moose mane, and I have two strands here. One is white, one is uh, brown, and all that does is make a great contrast for the body. So after I'm just going to work up and I like to go nice and slow making sure that I have touching wraps, making sure that my body is nice and even. That's why I kept the yellow tag end here is just so that when I wrap up for the rest of my body it will be the same diameter as it was down below. Um, so you want to leave yourself some room, about two eye lengths. Give it a trim. So I have about two eye lengths there. And I'm just going to secure those down. A few pesky fibers there. Um, so I have about two eye lengths there left. And that's where I'm going to stop my body. All I do is I take both moose mane pieces and I start wrapping them together. They will fall into line they will wrap right next to each other. They take a little coercing to do so, but they will start creating this little segmented body. So I'm gonna speed this up for you guys. All right, so here we have our nice body and you see that's great segmentation. I think that's half the reason that the fish bite. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a dubbing loop right where my moose mane stopped. I like to go around the base of the dubbing loop once, maybe twice, just to secure it in place. And you can move forward a little bit with your thread, but we're really not making that many wraps, only maybe two or three. Um, so the dubbing loop is gonna consist of the floss, the same floss for our tail. So all I do is I take that floss and I just tear it up. I rip it up into pretty small chunks um, that aren't too long and I just start taking the small fibers and I just put them in there. Again, you don't need too many. You don't want it to be too thick. You don't want it to be too overwhelming. So only enough, you know, maybe half an inch worth, maybe an inch worth. That's all I have. I don't have that much on there. and. Uh, so I just like to secure it, give it a few manual wraps here in our dubbing loop, and then I'm just gonna brush it out real gently just to get all the loose fibers out. Make sure they're all kind of in the same way. And then I'll give it my official twirl to really secure it. Now, I only want two, maybe three wraps. I really don't want a lot. I like to pull the fibers back so they're pointing backwards. There's one. There's two, and that, that looks good to me. I don't want it to be too much. So I'm gonna lock it in right there. Lock that in. Secure it in. Nice and tight. And so here we have the, just this nice little yellow sort of cusp around and I think that that's fantastic right there so you don't you want to be able to see the body you want to be able to see the body of the fly so you don't want this yellow to completely encompass the body you want to be able to see that moose mane um, at this point I'm going to trim it I just want a little tag just I just I like just a little tag I don't want too big of a tag so that's what we got so far just a nice yellow buggy looking um, fly. Then our final step is here I have a shoulder feather from a main grouse. 
And I like to use the shoulder feathers because they're quite dense. Uh, and they're very, very easy to wrap. So here, I'm just going to lock it in. And again, make sure you have room. Don't crowd your eye. So I, they're pretty slick. Actually, I'm going to go back. They're pretty slick, so I like to use hackle pliers for these. Um, but this is where a manual vise comes in handy because they're really delicate feathers. Um, but here, I'm going to use the manual function and just kind of the rotary function, I should say, and just work it back. And I don't want too many wraps, I just want really two wraps. So there's my two wraps, I'm just going to pull everything back and we'll lock it in once, twice, and that's it. I'm going to trim this little excess piece. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold all the fibers back, hold them right back, make sure you get all of them, and I'm going to start making my head working backwards. This is why it's important not to crowd the eye. All right, so there we go. Our, our the hackle's doing quite nice. It's holding back pretty great. And we're good to go. So I'm just gonna whip finish. What's important, since I use this fly really exclusively for the bigger trout in the fall, um, it's important that you put some head cement because it's the brook trout and salmon, they really, really chew it up. And it's a devastating, you know, if you only have one of these in your box or two, it's really devastating if the thread comes unloose at the head. So here I just have some Sally Hansen's hard as nails. And I just dab that on a little bit. And it just gives an extra protection, you know, it just gives an extra coating. And so that is it. That's our fly. It's crazy effective and especially if you're here in Maine for brook trout and you want to use an emerger this fly is absolutely killer um, so if you have a question or a comment where to use it when to use it how to use it feel free to ask below check us out on Instagram we're doing a 2k giveaway soon so you'll want to be following for that and uh, we thank you for watching this video and hopefully we see you next time